So moving on to the next section, we're gonna do a very important part. I always call this the most important part on the setup of these hybrids. It, it's, it's setting up the inverter so that it knows about what current or what power is going through the grid connection. Um, for a lot of its jobs, it's for example, its self-use function, it needs to know how much power is being imported or exported so it can do its job of either charging or discharging and also how much. So it needs to be accurate and it needs to be correct for it to do its job correctly. And in the box with the hybrid, you're getting the CT clamp. Um, it's got a meter cable with it, so a, a meter black and white CT cable with it and this is going to be used for most of your installations and you would uh, connect this up into the inverter as I said already uh, pin 1 is white and pin 2 is black and um, the CT needs to go around the live cable or the hot mains cable of your whole system so not the load circuit not the inverter circuit but the mains grid connection live and in a lot of installations uh, this cable might be more than 10 meters away from the inverter and this is where you need to move to the meter solution so for this solution the limits of the mains distance between between the mains and the inverter is 10 meters and that's when you would use this if it's less than that and you probably need to extend this so meter is not very long I am in talks about how we're going to extend this out of the box but just to show us how we would possibly um, extend it. So I've got this, this cable here. It's 0.5 millimeters square per core. There's a red core and a black core. It's two cores and so we only need two cores because we've got two cores here. Um, the colors I've got here is red and black. It's not important. You can, you can do whatever colors you like as long as you follow that logic through on the, on the cable. Uh, here I would uh, join I would probably solder these two and put a heat shrink around it to make it look a tidy, but you could use um, all sorts of, of, of methods of joining two cables together, um, hopefully not just twisting it because um, that would be very upsetting. Um, but yeah, you would join, so in this example, I mean, my brain works in the way that I would join the two blacks together and then I'll join uh, white to red. My extension cable is five meters long. So if I go to the other end of this cable, so this section of the cable, the CT would go into my mains, which could be seven, eight meters away on the other side of the install or at the customer's house main consumer unit or um, main switch. So that would go at that section of the house and then the other end of my cable. So this is five meter cable. I've got my red and black cable. And remember I connected black onto black and white onto red. So um, the, the pinouts for here is I would go through the gland here and I would connect my red into pin one and my black into pin two because white was pin one and black was pin two. A lot of these installations will have their, um, their grid connections more than 10 meters away, for example, 50 meters away, 60 meters away. And that's when you would need to use or, or contact Solace about uh, shipping you um, a, a meter, an Eastron single phase meter for your single phase installations. And you would install it like this. So you would install this meter at the grid connection and the CT cable at the bottom of the meter would be less than 10 meters so it's very important that that analog signal is less than 10 meters so this meter just needs to be installed within 10 meters of the grid connection and then you've got a rs-405 communication cable that sits between the meter and the inverter that can be up to 250 meters long so essentially you could have up to 260 meters 10 plus 250 meters between the grid connection and your inverter installation. Uh, just going into on how to wire this Eastron meter, it does show us on the, on, the, on the side of the meter on how to wire it. So you have live and neutral coming into the top where it gets uh, voltage measurements as well as power supply from. And then you get um, the next rail. So these two pins here on the right hand side uh, pins 9 and 10 labeled there is RS485B in the middle, uh, pin 9 and A, pin 10. And then at the bottom is again where you put your CT. 
you would install that there, have your long cable in that RS-45 communications is not a very uh, demanding on thickness cable, more shielded and twisted is, is an important feature of the cable, but um, 0.3 millimeter squared is good enough for your RS-45 cable. So you would have your cable running through to the inverter. I would always recommend making sure that your digital cables are running through trunking in a, in a separate trunking or like this trunking here where it's three level trunking and you've got your digital communication cables here and your power cables in a different um, level of the trunking. Um, and so you have it running through into the inverter. I'm just dropping everything coming up and it will come into your inverter. So we've, we, for the sake of this installation and the rest of this video, we are going to be thinking that we've done it a meter installation. Even though my grid connection is within five meters, I am doing the meter install. So I'm going through the same port as the BMS CAN cable and we can plug it through there. And then the second RJ45, black RJ45, on the bottom of the inverter is where you insert this cable, plug it into there, and that is done.